سيئات عملنا من يهد الله فهو المقتل ومن يضلل فلن تجد له ولي مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اما بعد فعلى امر بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز قوما بدين او فريز دو تو الله ان افتر ذات او فريز دو تو الله وي ثانك هيم وي سيك هيلب فروم هيم وي اسك غايدنس ان هيم اند وي سيك فورغيفنس ان هيم فروم اور اون ايفلز اند فروم اور اون باد ديدز اني ون هو بين غايديد باي الله ذي ار بين غايديد اند اني ون هو بين ميس غايديد باي الله يو نيفر فايند ان غايديد تو غايد يو ايفر ويت اس I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except for Allah, the only one without partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a servant and a messenger. To proceed forward. The brothers and sisters, from times of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they used to make a du'a uh, as the Ramadan was coming to an end. And this du'a that they made was that they said, "Oh Allah, allow us uh, the opportunity." to see one more Ramadan. Allow us the opportunity to see one more Ramadan. And alhamdulillah, we're here today, and this is an answer from Allah SWT for those of us who made the, call, uh, the dua last year to allow us to be able to see one more Ramadan. So this is one of those things that Allah SWT has blessed us with. But how many uh, of the people that you know of um, that, were, that were there who fasted or were, who were witnessing of Ramadan last year, Um, but are not around this year to be able to witness it again. Maybe it was a loved one, it was a friend. I would like to speak about uh, just one person, uh, if, if I may, who died basically just two nights before the, the, the beginning of Ramadan. Now likely, I mean, he was, he's been sick for a little while, and so most likely he wasn't fasting last Ramadan or, or, or maybe a few, a few Ramadan before, but that doesn't matter. As I mentioned uh, in, in my khutbah before, That Ramadan is more than just fasting. Ramadan is an experience. It's, it's, it's more than just, you know, you're fasting from sunrise to sunset. It's much more than that. And just to be able to witness it, go through it as a believer, is something that is, that, that, that is truly blessed. Um, this, I just want to tell you a story about this, this person. Uh, you know, this was in Los Angeles about, about two or three decades ago. And there was a, there was a man who was very, very distraught, and he was, he was about to commit suicide. He was, he was in a high-rise building, and he was about to jump off. And the police negotiator, they tried to work with the man, and, and whatever they said, it wasn't working. And so it, it came on the radio that this man was there and those type of things. And there was another person who actually heard that this, this man was about to jump. And so, uh, and he realized that this, the scene that was happening was only about four miles away from his house. So four minutes later, you could see this person driving down the wall, long side of the road, in his Rolls Royce with blinking lights, trying to get to that person. And in the suit and tie, he, he basically went up to, to, the, to, to the person he got on the ledge itself to help that person out. And when the, when, when the person who was about to jump saw him, he looked at him and said, is that really you? And the response that that person gave was, Uh, to, to the person about to jump, he said, you are my brother, I love you, and I wouldn't lie about this. You have to listen to me. I want you to come home with me and meet some friends of mine. And he promised to find him a job, and about a half an hour later, uh, he put his arm around the shoulders of the, of the person that was about to jump, and he led him back to safety. He is also quoted as saying one time, he said, I would like to be remembered as a man who won the heavyweight championship three times. Who was, who, was, who was humorous and who treated everyone right. A man who never looked down and go, uh, on those who looked up at him. And who helped as many people as he could. A man who stood up for his beliefs no matter what. As a man who tried to unite all humankind through faith and love. And if all that, all, and if all that is, if, if all of that is too much, then I guess I'd settle for being remembered only as a great boxer who became a leader and a champion of his people. And I wouldn't even, 
And I wouldn't even mind if folks forgot that I was a little pretty. Um, as you know, I'm speaking about uh, none other than Muhammad Ali. And actually, he's somebody you know, famous even here in Malaysia. Because when he was actually about to fight the thriller in Manila against Joe Frazier, where did he train? He actually trained in Malaysia for a few months before the actual fight. He was here. And, and as I was reading the stories, I found out there was about 20,000 people who came to greet him at the airport when he landed in Kuala Lumpur. So, I mean, there's a lot of people. I mean, he's touched, mashallah, so many different people um, in, in his life. And so he's, you know, one of the greatest athletes of our time and also one of the greatest human beings of our time as well. And we have a lot to learn from the, the person of such a life as Muhammad Ali. And he loved mankind, and, and mankind actually loved him as well. In fact, you know, this is one of the signs of Allah SWT. That if Allah SWT, um, the Prophet Wasallam, he said in the hadith, he said, if Allah loves someone, he calls, uh, um, he calls to Jibreel, and he tells him, I love so and so. So love him. And Jibreel loves him and calls the other <coughs> angels in heaven to love that person. And they love him. Then this love is made upon the earth and he becomes beloved to everybody. And this, if you look at the life of Muhammad Ali, that's the life that he led, was that he was loved by everybody, and even the people that he defeated. Even like Joe Frazier, who called, he called ugly and a gorilla and all that. Even after the fight, they actually loved him. And in fact, whoever was alive, even of his opponents, actually was out there in his funeral prayer that happened just yesterday. <clears throat> so, a little bit about his life, you know, he was born Cassius Clay, and uh, uh, he got into boxing. He won the Olympic gold in 1960, and then after winning the heavyweight championship in 1964, he announced that he, had, he, was, ex he was entering into the nation of Islam, and he changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. And he later on accepted the Orthodox uh, Islam as well. And he was a great role model, not only uh, uh, as, as, as a boxer, but as, as Muslims. And we can, as Muslims, also learn from his life. Uh, but I think there's so many different things, different, different aspects of his life that we can talk about, and how we can benefit from his life, and how we can apply, or how we can inculcate these things within our own life. But because this is a chutbah, I'm going to limit my 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 to only three things that I want to highlight uh, about his life: his belief, his persistence, and his uh, uh, his eventual uh, onslaught of Parkinson's disease. So the first quality I'd like to speak about, um, and that is that he worked hard and was very persistent uh, in, in 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 what he did. He won the heavyweight championship three times. When most people actually after the first one probably would say that's enough for me. I mean, imagine coming to the pinnacle of your career, the highest thing you can get, ever get to, and then most people say, okay, well that's enough for me. But it wasn't enough for, uh, for from him. He actually wanted to do it over and over again uh, uh, from there. So he was very very persistent. Uh, he was good. Uh, he was very good at boxing, and he trained very hard. And he knew that well, that with training he could be the best. He was one time he he one time said. I hated every minute of training, but I said, don't quit. Suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. Suffer now and live the rest of your, uh, rest of your life as a champion. And so in our own lives, whether it be studying for exams or preparing for presentations, or even uh, uh, taking the blessings from this month of Ramadan, these things sometimes become very, very hard for us. These, these are our training within our lives that we, that, that we have. We have to remember that their training is very hard. But the harder you train, the sweeter the more the reward is going to be. The harder you train, the, the, the more good deeds you do in Ramadan, the sweeter that reward is going to be, even though those, the, those deeds are hard for you to do. You get up at night to pray, it's hard, because you have to go to work the next day. But if you do it, you know, Allah SWT guarantees that He's going to give you a much more sweeter reward. And that's what Muhammad Ali here is actually talking about. So you should never, we should never lose sight of the ultimate goal, and if that means that we have to suffer in this life because of it, then fine. But we have to also know that if we have to suffer in this life, that we will be champions on the Day of Judgment. That is something we have to realize. And while we're going through life, we will have setbacks and we'll have failures. 
But after every one, every one of those things, we have with faith in Allah SWT, we have to get back up and we have to go after the prize again. We have to go after it again, even if we fail. And that is something that we learned from the life of Muhammad Ali. The implication of the fact that he won three championships is that he had to lose to be able to gain them back. And that's exactly what happened. After he lost, he actually went back and did it again. He trained harder. He learned from his mistakes to be able to come back and be the champion again. Because everyone, uh, uh, because everyone else couldn't do it. Uh, it's something that he was able to do. A lot of people thought it was impossible. That is, nobody else did it, so how is it possible that even, even, even he would be able to do this champion again, and then after that, a third time as well. And many thought it was impossible. But you know about impossible? This is what Muhammad Ali said about impossible. He said, impossible is just a big word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in the world that they've been, that, that they've been given, uh, given than to, rather than to explore the power uh, uh, that they have to be able to change it. Impossible is not a fact, it's an opinion. Impossible is not a declaration, it's a dare. Impossible is potential. Impossible is temporary. Impossible is nothing. And if you look at our, the life of our beloved Messenger we have examples of this. I mean, just one that comes to mind as, as I'm thinking about it, is they were in the battle of, uh, the, in the, battle of the ditch, which is called the Battle of Khandaq, right? There's, there's, there's the Quraysh and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the non-believers that are coming upon the city of Mecca, uh, coming up on the city of Medina. From the back side you have the, the, uh, the, the Jews that have actually become treacherous and now they're attacking. And they have to build a, a ditch, it's bitter cold, and they come more upon a place where they can't even go any further. And in that moment, as the Prophet ﷺ is striking on the, on, on the rock, and, 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 and the Muslims are watching him, what does he say? On one of the stops that he, he strikes, he said that I can see the palaces of Khusra. They can't even beat the army of Quraysh, and he's talking about winning Persia, one of the greatest armies uh, of the time. That's an impossible dream, but the Prophet ﷺ didn't think it was impossible. Because why? Because impossible is temporary. Impossible is not a fact, it's a dare. If we have that feeling in our minds, then we can accomplish whatever we want within our lives. Impossible is not a fact. Impossible is a potential. Impossible is temporary. Impossible is nothing. So whenever we're faced with setbacks within our lives, we have to learn from our mistakes. We have to get ourselves back up, and we have to do it again. And this is the nature, if you think about it, this is the nature of Toba. The Toba has three conditions. The first one is that you have to realize your mistake. Meaning if you fail, you have to realize you, you, you're not perfect. You have to realize that you, even you can fail, but how can you actually learn from it? So that's the first one. Meaning that you have, you have to realize you did something wrong, and you have to admit that you actually did it. And for Ali, uh, Muhammad Ali, it was that he realized that he wasn't the greatest, and that he was able to get defeated, but he had to get over it. Number two, is that you seek forgiveness from Allah. That's the second, the second part of, of Toba, is that you have to seek forgiveness from Allah SWT. And for Ali, it was to start training again for the next match. And within our own lives, we can, we can see this as well. If, if once we actually realize this, we'll begin to do this. And the third one <coughs> is that you make a commitment not to do it again. That's the third part of the part of Toba, that if you make a sin, you make a commitment not to do it again. And so you learn from your mistakes. You realize you do what's called a muhasaba, an accounting of yourself. What is it that you did right? What is it that you did wrong? And how do you correct the mistake? If you're not getting up for Fajr in the morning, if you're not getting up for Tahajr in the morning, even during the month of Ramadan, it's, it's a, it, it becomes your duty to be able to realize that's a mistake in Ramadan not to do that. And then to be able to sit down at night and say, okay, what is it that's going to take me to be able to do that at night? What is it going to take? That's a failure if I'm not able to wake up for the Hajj. So how do I accomplish that? How do I make myself a better person? And that doesn't only really happen to see in spiritual, it can happen in other things as well. It happens in your life. In fact, majority of now the startups that are, that are taking place and the successful ones, they're looking for CEOs that have actually failed at startups. They've actually failed in their own entrepreneurial goals. Because why? Because they're looking for people that are A, they're humble, they realize their mistakes. And the B is that they can learn from them and they can become better people because of that. 
And so we have to begin to learn to do that just like Muhammad Ali did as well. We have to learn from our mistakes and be able to pick ourselves back up and not be, have a defeatist attitude, but have an attitude of, yes, I failed, but that's okay. I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it better, and I'm going to become a champion once again. The second lesson we can learn from Ali's life is from his firmness in belief and his patience with the truth. Now, in the 1960s, as the, as, as the U.S. Was, uh, was at war with, with, with Vietnam, Muhammad, Muhammad Ali actually got drafted to go to Viet, and fight the Viet Cong. He actually got drafted to do that. And he refused based on his belief and that he didn't want to fight in a war that was not for him. In fact, he believed that Islam was peace and he didn't want to fight. And so he, did, he decided that even though he was drafted, meaning it's, it's a forced conscription, you're forced to join the army, he decided he wasn't going to do that. And because of that, he actually um, went to jail, he fought a legal battle to stay out of jail after he got out, and then also, I mean, the, his most prized possession that he had was his boxing career. And the state of New York actually removed his license from him, so he couldn't box again. And yet, even then, he refused to go and fight. All he had to do was, was, was basically sign up, and he would be, be given everything back. And he didn't do that because he knew he had a firm belief within his heart that what he was doing was right and going to war was something that was wrong. <clears throat> and in, when he, in response to that, what did he say? He said, I did not lose a thing up until this very moment. He's talking about after losing the, 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 the boxing license, he's saying this. He says, I did not lose a, a thing up to this moment. I have gained a lot. I have gained a peace of mind. I have gained a peace of heart. I now know I am content with Almighty God Himself. I have also gained the respect of everyone here today. Worldwide, I have gained respect. And he, and he, and he actually honestly did. He actually gained respect from all the people for standing up for his beliefs. And in the end, he was proven right that it wasn't an unjustified war. And other people came around to his belief. Not he went and be able to went around to other people's belief as well. I ask Allah SWT to make us of those who listen and obey, who have acceptance and forgiveness during this month, and who learn from the examples that Allah has left us in this world uh, to be able to become better people. So I've been speaking uh, about the passing of arguably one of the greatest athletes uh, of all times, of our times at least, if not of all times. And we spoke about two aspects uh, uh, earlier. The first one was his persistence in the face of adversity. And his persistence in the face of adversity. And Allah SWT mentions, he says, uh, in the Allah that verily Allah is with those that are patient. Now, it's, it's really, you know more patience when you're tested with, with something. You don't learn patience out of, out, of, out of nothing. And so we, you know, in, in this example of, 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 of Muhammad Ali, we have this idea of persistence, getting up and doing it over again. Even not accepting a defeat or not accepting failure, but trying to be the best human being, the best athlete that he could be, and that's what he was able to accomplish. And the second one that, he, that, 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 that we talked about was a strong belief that he did not bend in the face of even jail and any major setbacks uh, uh, that he had in his career. And he said after his defeat, this is after one of his uh, 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 fights that he had, that he lost, he said, I never thought of losing. Right? And then think about this. I never thought of losing. If you look at the Prophet وسلم, you think he ever thought the fact that, that Allah SWT wouldn't fulfill the promise of making Islam the greatest religion in the, in the, in the history? He didn't. He never wavered on the fact that he knew that Allah SWT was going to grant him that. And so this is Muhammad Ali saying this. He said, I, I never thought of losing. And this is an attitude we have to have within our life. If we're going to do something as, uh, as, as people, we have to look, failure is not an option. This is the belief system you go into when you want to be able to do something. I never thought of losing. But now that it's happened, the only thing is to do it right. That means that you don't think about the loss, but if it happens, the next thing you think about is how am I going to make this thing right? That's my obligation to all people who believe in me. 
we all have we all have to take defeats within our lives. So he's humbling himself now, right? I mean, he used to think he was the greatest, he was the best, he was the prettiest, all of those different things. And now he's beginning to realize that maybe he's not. But that, that realization is prompting him, it's urging him, it's motivating him to do even better. And again, this is something we can learn uh, from, truly, we can learn from his life. Um, as I mentioned, we can truly learn from, his, from this giant, not only in his professional career, but also after his retirement, uh, from the service that he did to humanity, right? He became a human ambassador, and he spent, after he retired, he spent his entire career basically serving uh, as an ambassador to the UN, uh, helping people, helping Islam. I mean, it's very interesting to me. I was watching some of the parts of the, of the, uh, of the funeral prayer, and the, the YouTube clip that I saw, the entire funeral prayer was done on Fox News in the US. Now, I don't know if you know about Fox News, but that is the most conservative channel. If that's the one that, if there's any news channel that was pump, uh, that was promoting Donald Trump, it was Fox News. Fox News was the one that was uh, broadcasting live the entire uh, the funeral services of Muhammad Ali. This is with Imam Zayd Chakin who was giving the khutbah uh, uh, for that. It was uh, non-Muslims learning about his is uh, about what Janazah actually is within the Muslim faith. I mean, mashallah, this uh, Muhammad Ali was able to even be able to give da'wah in his death. He was even able to do that within his death. He probably touched more people in his death than we will ever touch within our lives. SubhanAllah. Right? And this is the person that, that we have to, as I mentioned, something that we can greatly learn from. But <clears throat> I say this all, and I have to mention this one point, and this is something that even he came to the realization of, uh, and it's something that, that, that I have to mention now. Just the fact that I'm speaking about him in my khutbah and dedicating the entire khutbah means that I have a lot of re uh, reverence for this person. He, he really did. I mean, he was a big influence uh, within my life. But that being said, um, the truth has to be the truth. Um, and there is one thing that, 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 that we have to talk about, and that is uh, that he was, uh, for all intents and purposes, when he was in his fighting career, he was a very arrogant person, right? He used to put, the way he used to uh, 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 talk was he always used to put people down. And, and I, I hinted that, that uh, a little bit. And some might argue that he, you know, he was a great showman. So he did that out of showmanship. And some people argue that he did it out of intimidation. He wanted to intimidate his opponent. Very fine, well and good. But that's not the way of our beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I mean, just one example that comes to my mind as I was writing the khutbah was, uh, and, 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 I'll, uh, and I'll just mention this, but let me uh, I mention something, one thing about Muhammad Ali that he said, and it's even an idea about, about what I'm talking about. One time he, was, uh, he actually said, I've wrestled with alligators, I've tussled with whales, I've done handcuffed lightning, and I've thrown thunder in jail. You know I'm bad. Just like last week, I murdered a rock, I injured a stone, I hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Right? I mean, this, is, this was his nature. This is how he, he was a performer. That's what he did. But now compare that to the Prophet For example, when his greatest victory happened during the life of the Prophet which was the of Mecca, the conquest of Mecca, it's reported that when he was entering the city, his, his chest was almost touching the back of the horse. He was sitting down on the horse and his chest was almost touching out of humility to Allah SWT. Out of humility. He wasn't walking proud. If, if you look at most of the conquests that happened with most generals and most emperors, they are standing high on their horses or their tanks or whatever it is, and they walk or they, they ride into the city. This was not the nature of the love messages of Allah SWT. He was humble when it came to that. Uh, and, 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 and this is something that Allah SWT mentioned that in victory, in Surah Fatih or Surah Nasr, He mentions, إِذَا جَاءَ نَسْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَجَةً What does Allah SWT say? After the, the men come into the religion in falls, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَالَ To remember Allah even in the victories, not to be arrogant about it, not to boast about it, but to remember Allah SWT. In the 80s, after his retirement, Muhammad Ali was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Now, if you know something about Parkinson's disease, it basically, you lose control of all of your motor skills. You lose control of what you can't even, you know, you can't write, you can't walk, you can't do anything. You should basically lose the muscle control that you actually have. And so he went 
from being a person who called other people ugly. Uh, you know, he was the one who was beautiful. He had speed. He had power. He had all of these things. To somebody who couldn't even control himself, right? And about his own condition, this is the only reason I'm mentioning because he realized it, he realized this, and then he used it as an example again. He used it as an example to teach people. And what he said about it was, this life is not real. This is what he said. He said, this life is not real. I conquered the world and did not bring me any satisfaction. I conquered the world and it did not bring me any satisfaction. God gave me this, in, in, this illness to remind me. I am not number one. He is. Right? This is the person who realized his mistakes and humbled himself towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to remember that with this within our own lives as well. So no matter how many victories we have, or how many defeats we have, and the victories we have to be able to celebrate, but in the proper way. That we can take uh, take on the effort, we can always take on the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that have to do with mercy, with love, with kindness, with forgiveness. All of those things, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ar-Rahman, ar-Rahim, al-Ghafur, all of these things, we can take on, or we can try to take on those attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we ever try to take on the attributes of Allah that are Aziz, or, uh, uh, or Shadeed, powerful, the, 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 the swift in punishment, all of these things, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will break our backs. In this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will break our backs. And that is one of the major lessons we can learn from the life of our beloved Muhammad Ali. Uh, and, uh, as, as we move forward, I ask Allah SWT to protect us from arrogance, from pride, and from self-aggrandizement. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adabana. Rabbana la tuakhidna in nasina wa akhtarna. Rabbana wa la tahmid alayna isman kama hamantah wa ala balina min qabina. Rabbana wa la tuhambinna ma la taqatalana bih. وعفونا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين. One time Aisha رضي الله عنها she asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم what is the best dua that I can make in, in Ramadan. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم responded back and he said اللهم انك عفو تحب العفو فاعفونا. Oh Allah, اللهم انك عفو you are the forgiver. تحب العفو you love to forgive. فاعفونا so forgive us. اللهم انك عفو تحب العفو فاعفونا. اللهم يا مقلب الخلوف فبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم إننا نسألك إيمانا كاملا ويقينا صادقا وقلبا خاشعا ولسانا ذاكرا شاكرا وعملا صالحا وعلما نافعا ورسما واسعا وتوبة نسوحا وتوبة قبل الموت وراحة عند الموت ومغفرة بعد الموت برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا محمد على آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالم فإنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالم فإنك حميد مجيد وأعطي الصلاة